Hey guys, today I just wanted to talk about some CTK04 setup with Beacon equipment. And uh, a lot of questions on how to set up air conditioning with the Daikin stuff specifically. So uh, go ahead and just go over that today, step by step. So on the agenda is we're gonna look at Daikin communicating furnaces with non-communicating air conditioners, and then how to set up the Daikin. Um, so with a non-communicating air conditioner, uh, we have to set the cooling airflow at the thermostat. Um, doesn't matter what you do down at the board or anything like that. Uh, you have to set the airflow and trim at the stat. So we'll go to our uh, TTK04 screen here. Uh, we're gonna select our menu button. Uh, we're gonna go down to our ComfortNet user menu. And then we're gonna type in our dealer code. Now, if you don't have the, uh, the thermostat dealer code, you can go back up to, if you look here at dealer information, if you click on that, you'll get the four digit code to put in. And that way you don't have to pull the stat off the wall. Uh, to look at that number. So always just go to that dealer information, you'll get that four digit code. Uh, so you put in the number and then you're gonna hit yes to change settings. Um, so in this case, because only the furnace is communicating, we're gonna select furnace. We won't have the option for an outdoor unit. So we'll click on that. And then we're gonna wanna scroll down that menu all the way till we get down to non-communicating air conditioner. So we'll go ahead and click on that guy. And then the first thing you're going to see, it's going to say CL, CFM, and then 18. So it comes default from the factory uh, showing that 18, which is saying 18,000 BTUs or one and a half tons of cooling. So if you don't change this, uh, you know, say you install a three ton air conditioner, it's only going to be giving you a ton and a half of airflow, uh, which will freeze up a coil pretty quick doing that. So it's important to go to the setting and make sure it's correct. So we click on that CLCFM18. In this case, you know, for example, we'll say we have a three and a half ton air conditioner. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on that 42 for 42,000 BTUs. And then what we can do is we can actually go to our status option, which is right above non-communicating air conditioner. And we can actually verify that, you know, we have the correct air. So we'll click on status and it's gonna show that our current airflow is 1400 CFM. We verified that we have three and a half tons of airflow. Uh, so just kind of going back into the non-communicating air conditioner section, uh, we can set an airflow trim if we'd like, if we'd like to reduce the, uh, the speed of the fan down a little bit, say you wanna try to get a little bit closer to 350 CFM per ton instead of 400, uh, we can set a trim for that. So if you select trim, uh, here it says that you can go from negative 10 to 10% by 2% increments. I think that may have changed to 15% possibly. I've seen it both ways in the CCK04. So um, one of those two should be normal depending on your thermostat. Uh, so you go in, you select that. In this case, we're gonna select negative 8% trim off of the airflow. And so we just go back and we verify that it's reduced by 8%. Uh, now our current airflow is 1288. Uh, so if you want to kind of fine tune and you know do it best for the system, you can go in there and make the changes. Uh, then we can also set profiles. Uh, so profiles will be the actual ramping up and down of the fan during a cooling call. So if we select a profile, uh, here's a description of what the different profiles are. So profile A is going to be, you know, on a call for cooling, we're going to ramp up to 100% of that demand. We're just going to run 100%. We're not going to try to dehumidify, you know, at all with a lower fan speed. Um, you know, this might work in some cases for customers where they want to hear the airflow like right away. Um, I've run into some instances where uh, I, in one particular example, I had zoning on it and it worked best where I had it set for 100% CFM on that zoning system. So uh, you got to do what's best for the system and what the customer prefers. Uh, but some other options there, profile B, you have 50% operation for a half minute. Uh, so you get a little bit of, you know, extra dehumidification, you know, getting that co coil really cold to pull some moisture out of the air. Uh, profile C, you're going to ramp up to 82% right away uh, for about seven and a half minutes. And then after seven and a half minutes, if you're not satisfied, you're bumping up to 100%. Uh, so that's pretty good for helping with dehumidification. And profile D, which is the default, um, you know, this is probably our best option to use uh, as long as it works for the customers. For the first half minute, we're going to run at 50% uh, 
fan speed, we're gonna get that coil really cold and then we're gonna bump it up to 82%. So we're really you know, doing as much dehumidification as we can. Um, if we don't meet our cooling load or our set point after that seven, actually eight minutes in this case, at that point, we're gonna bump up to 100% fan speed to make it the rest of the way there. Uh, so my recommendation is to set it to profile D, uh, but again, you know, talk to your customers, see what works for them, you know, use your judgment to figure out what works best for the customer's equipment. Uh, so next section is talking about the deck and fit, uh, how we're gonna set that up on the CTK04. And so this is just for the fit air conditioning. Things will change a little bit with the heat pump most likely. Uh, there might be some other nuances in there that you know I haven't gone through yet. So this will just stick with cooling only for now. Um, so when we're commissioning it, we have to first do an equipment test. Uh, so we'll just go through the steps on how to do that. Uh, so we're gonna go to our comfort net user menu again, we'll select that. Now we have that option because we have that communicating air conditioner we're gonna select air conditioner. I might say indoor unit, depending on the thermostat. Again, I've seen it both ways. So, uh, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, which one's which. Um, so then we're gonna go into equipment test uh, under the ComfortNet user menu. And then it's just gonna ask you simply, you know, system test off and on, we'll turn it on. And it's gonna run probably for about 15 minutes uh, to do that full equipment test. It's gonna, you know, sort of spread its wings, you know, check the sensors, make sure everything's looking okay. Um, so I've been told by Dyke and Tech Support that depending on the temperature outside, it could take in, you know, anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour for this test to be done. Uh, you know, one of our, their reps at Dyke and told me about somebody in Canada doing this test at negative five out and it took about you know, an hour or so. So uh, just wait until the test is done, be patient. Uh, so once it's complete, uh, we want to verify that we have the proper charge. So what should have been done to begin with is we should have, you know, weighed in whatever the proper additional charge is based on line set length. Um, so we should be able to get pretty close at that, but we still just want to make sure that our charge is right on point. Uh, so what we do is we're going to go back into that comfort net user menu under air conditioner or in or outdoor unit. We're going to select system set of two. And then we're going to turn charge mode on. And what charge mode does is it's going to ramp our equipment up to 100% operation. Um, another thing to be patient on, it does take some time to kind of ramp up and get there. Um, and what happens when it goes into charge mode, it'll give you one hour of runtime to, you know, fine tune your charge and complete it. Uh, one other thing to note for this and the equipment test is you're going to want the system turned off when you're doing this. And we can actually verify we're at 100% modulation um, during this test. We can go back out uh, into our air conditioner menu and go to status. And then, you know, we want to wait until it says our actual capacity or our output is at 100%. Um, so one tip I'll give you as you're checking it, uh, the comfort net user menu doesn't seem to update, you know, in real time. So what I've done before is I've actually if it seems like it's taking a long time to ramp up, I kind of go back out of the comfort net user menu and go back in and it will update a lot faster if you do that. So uh, that'll prevent you from waiting 10 minutes to see a change from, you know, maybe 85% to 100% when really it was running at 100% all along. So, and then in some cases, as we get it set up, we might need to go and adjust the airflow. Um, duct design and static pressure restrictions are really going to factor into this as far as you know how the fan is operating. Um, so if we want to change that, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the ComfortNet user menu under air conditioner. Uh, we're going to select this cool setup. And in there we have the option of adjusting trim on the lowest modulation, uh, sort of the middle ground on the highest modulation. And you can do from negative 15% to positive 15% in 3% increments. Um, so, you know, just you can select each one. If you want a, a trim on the highest or lowest, you can go in and do that. So that's it. Uh, it should be a pretty good overview of what you need to do on the CTK04 with taking equipment. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and we can go over it. All right, thanks guys. Have a good day.